Greetings everyone and welcome back to another phone review. In today's one we're having a look at another rugged phone from AGM. This video is made as a part of its release on August 23rd so hopefully I make it out on time. But a massive thank you to AGM once again for sending this phone out to me for review. I really do appreciate it as always and since I like to go very in depth with my reviews there are timestamps in the description as well as the pinned comment to skip to wherever you need to be. I know the length of these videos can be a bit ridiculous but covering everything I can on a phone does take a lot of time. Time. This will be a premiere, so hello to the chat once again. I will be a bit more serious in this review, but I will try and make it entertaining on the way. If you are interested in this item, there are links down in the description below. They are not affiliate links, so I'll not earn anything if you go there and purchase the phone, or if you just want to have a look at it. It's just down there for your convenience. I'm also not being paid by AGM for this review, and all opinions within this video are my own. Now, this next bit of information is going to seem a bit confusing, but just follow along with me, okay? AGM has also told me that from the 23rd of August till the 31st of August, the phone will launch for $180 US on their own website, which I'll display the currency conversion chart on screen for you all here. Feel free to pause the video if you need to, because you'll have to keep pausing for the next couple of minutes. Now, the first 100 buyers of the phone from AGM's website will get a free pair of JBL earphones that I featured in my M7 review, which I'll cut up here, because I did review the earphones within that video. Also, AGM has given me a custom coupon code, which gets you 10% off, which is just my YouTube name S'mores. Now I'm not sure if that 10% off coupon code will work on other AGM products or not, but it's there if you want to use it, any saving is better than none. Now after the 31st of August it goes up to $200 US, which I'll display the currency conversion chart once again on screen, so feel free to pause the video. However, if you go onto AliExpress, it's the same sort of deal except the early bird price as I call it from August 23rd to August 27th is $150 US, and I'll display the currency conversion chart once again on screen, feel free to pause. And the first 100 buyers get the free JBL earphones that I mentioned before. And then after the 27th, the phone will then sell for 170 US dollars on AliExpress, which I'll display pricing on screen once again. So if you are interested in purchasing the phone and miss the deadline for it being cheap, if you buy straight from AliExpress, you get $20 off instead of purchasing it straight from AGM, if I understand correctly. Basically, within all of that complicated mess of confusion, the phone retails for about $199 US. Now, the listing for the AGM H3 on AliExpress, which is currently the pre-release listing showing what I believe to be the full retail price, but I've already talked about pricing just enough and it's already too confusing. But anyways, let's continue on. There are two packages to choose from. First is just the phone. The second is with the JBL earphones, so the price will also then be different. There's only one color to choose from, which is the black and orange one, which is what I have. Free shipping also, which is good. The first AGM device that I had a look at on this channel was a fairly basic one, but it did put up one hell of a fight. This time around, we have a fully fledged smartphone with one pretty nifty feature. So let's dig into the specifications and see what this rugged device packs. The model is the AGM H3 in the standard package. The front of the phone is glass and has no listed glass protection. The frame and back are made of a combination of plastic and rubber. It is IP68 and IP69K certified, as well as being military standard 810 compliant. So this should survive in pretty much any scenario, but we will test all of this in the durability test. The system on chip is the MediaTek Helio P22. It is an octa-core processor and is based on a 16 nanometer manufacturing process. It also has a Mali G71 MP2 GPU on board. This is a fairly outdated processor, but for what audience this is intended for, it should be more than enough. The RAM configuration in this unit sits at 4GB. Storage is 64GB and also has support to add a microSD card up to 128GB. The display on this phone is a 5.7 inch 720x1440 IPS LCD. We have a triple camera setup consisting of a 12 megapixel main camera, a 2 megapixel macro camera, and the main selling point of this is a 13 megapixel infrared night vision camera, which will be very, very interesting to try out. The front camera is just a standard 8 megapixel one, nothing too special here. The battery is 5400 milliamp hours and should support 10 watt fast charging. The OS is Android 11 and seems to be fairly stock at this point in time, which is good. Our connectivity options are listed on screen. We do have NFC, we do have a radio, we do have USB Type-C as well. There's a rear-mounted fingerprint sensor. Now there's no headphone jack on this phone, but there is a front-mounted speaker rated at 2 watts and is also waterproof. And from the previous AGM phone that I reviewed, the speaker on that was extremely loud and beefy, so hopefully the H3 packs a punch in the audio department. Now we come down to the networks. This is compatible with 2G, 3G and 4G. It should support most major networks around the world, but the band list is on screen for you all here. If you are thinking about purchasing 
purchasing this phone, please make sure that you check with your network providers to make sure your country supports these bands. The SIM card tray has the option to have two nano SIMs at dual 4G standby, or one nano SIM and a micro SD card. In the box, we get the phone, a charger, USB cable, a headphone jack to Type-C USB adapter, a quick start guide, and the online warranty guide, which means that you get one year online warranty if you do purchase this device. The spec sheet from the listing on AliExpress is also shown on screen. This is pretty much everything I've already covered, but feel free to pause the video and go over this if you need to. And that's pretty much all these specifications in detail. So now let's move on to the advertising of the AGM H3 to just make sure we have a better understanding of this phone. And the first picture just shows a quick roundup of these specifications, saying that the premiere is on the 23rd of August. You can see the triple camera setup on the back as well as the two little infrared red light sensors, which is one of the main selling points of this device. And the second picture is just going over the triple camera setup on the back of the device. As mentioned in the specifications, we've got the 13 megapixel infrared night vision camera, the 12 megapixel main camera, and a 2 megapixel macro camera. And as far as I know, none of the cameras in this phone have any optical image stabilization. The next advertisement is hyping up the night vision camera. And as it says, have you ever caught a fish at night? And that says it's shot on the AGM H3, but next to it, they've got two comparisons with a Xiaomi Mi 11 and then an iPhone 12. But they've just got the main image and then just darkened it on both those ones. So that's kind of not really a fair comparison, but anyways, we'll keep moving on. The next picture is pretty much exactly the same as above, except this time around, they're going to check on a baby to see if it's asleep or not. And the next image is just a tent. That's it. So moving on. The next block of pictures are pretty much the same as the last, except we're in the wild and the comparisons with the iPhone 12 and Mi 11 are also there. And as I said before, it's not really a good comparison. But anyways, continuing on. 12 megapixels is better than 48 megapixels, lighter pixel, better quality. What all of this is saying is that the sensor in this is pretty big, but it also says that this has a 6P sapphire lens. And I'm not sure if that means a sapphire lens inside of the camera or outside of the camera. I'm not too sure about that one. The next one's just a few photos that are taken with the AGM H3 in various scenarios. The next picture is talking about the customizable side key, which I forgot to mention in the specifications. So you can use this for push to talk, app shortcuts, a camera shutter key, and possibly a lot more. I bet you always have problems about your phone while biking. I don't ride a bike, so I can't really comment on this one. Next level sound interaction, two watt front speaker, louder like a Bluetooth speaker, louder than 97% smartphone. So we will test to see how loud this actually is. We've got a picture just showing some of the networks it does support around the world. Please check with your network provider to make sure the bands listed will work in your country. Android 11, yes, H3 is Android 11. By the looks of this as well, it appears to be bare bones stock Android 11. When we power this on, we'll check that all out. Reliable performance with the chipset being the MediaTek MT6762 or the Helio P22 as it's called. As I mentioned, this is a fairly outdated processor, but it is more than sufficient for the intended audience of this phone. We've just got a picture here saying that it's got four gigs of RAM and 64 gigs of storage. Safe and big battery lasts for more than a day. It's a 5,400 milliamp hour battery with 45 hours of music, 38 hours of film, 40 hours for a phone call. Who could make a phone call that goes for 40 hours? Holy moly. And 300 hours standby time. The 12 millimeter thin body, thinner than 80% of rugged phones, lighter than 93% of rugged phones. And as you can see in the picture, it does have a pretty thin profile and the weight of this phone is 248 grams. The next one shows it being drop proof, waterproof and dust proof with its certifications. The AGM H3 also has face ID and the remounted fingerprint sensor as we've gone over. The charging port is on the side of the phone, which is a bit unusual to see. And finally, the last picture is just product specifications. There is no new information in this picture. So that's pretty much the advertising for the AGM H3. So let's go ahead and unbox this night vision phone and see how it goes. Okay, here is the box here. This took four days to be delivered to me from China to Australia via DHL, which is pretty good. So let's open up this box and take a look at the AGM H3. Okay, there it is there. And here is the box with a line on the front saying the infrared night camera three times. Around the sides, we've got the sticker that says AGM H3 with Android 11, 5.7 inch, 720 by 1440 display, 5400 milliamp hour battery, the 13 megapixel infrared night camera, 12 megapixel main camera, and the two megapixel macro camera. We've got the color being black, four gigs of RAM and 64 gigs of storage, the serial numbers and the IMEI info. Around the other sides of the box, we just have these little crosses, just going all over the place. Uh, we have the AGM official sticker just there, which we'll have to break open, and nothing on the back. That was pretty plain. Well, this has got a line on the front. That's cool. Slicing through the factory sticker. Oh, my razor blade's getting a little dull. We get a look at the device itself. 
which we'll just put to the side. Oh, that's got a bit of heft to it. But inside, we've got some documentation, online warranty support card with the Simaject tool attached to it. AGM stands for Action Gains Memory. I never knew that, but now I know. The Quick Start Guide just has everything that we need to know about the phone, including the sensors, receivers, customizable key, everything that we've went over in the specifications already. The frequency bands, in case you missed it the first time, there it all is there. Once again, feel free to pause the video. If I need to come back to that manual, I will, but at this point in time, I think I'm all good. Now we've got the USB Type-C cable. We've got a European charger, didn't come with a travel adapter, but this is just a 5 volt 2 amp at 10 watts. We've got a 3.5 mil headphone jack to USB Type-C cable included in the box. And then finally, that's it. That's all we've got. Alrighty. Taking the plastic off the phone. So we've got the three cameras in this little circle just here, which reminds me of the Mate 40, I think it is. Uh, so we've got the infrared camera just on the left there, the 12 megapixel main camera, as well as the two megapixel macro camera. We've got a remounted fingerprint sensor. Now the device has a plastic back with these nice textured areas with these cool looking orange stripes that go along there. We've got the military standard 810H guarantee designed by AGM. We've got the SIM card tray, which we'll have a look at soon. The customizable key for push to talk and other functions. We've also got these little bumpers that go around each corner of the phone to protect it from any drops. Now at the bottom of the phone, we have no USB port. We just have a little hole for a microphone. It's because the USB Type-C port is hidden. I'll show you that soon. On the other side, we just have the power button as well as the volume rocker and at the top we've got another hole for a microphone and that's basically it but the USB type-c port is hidden just here like so now I have neglected to show the front of the phone because the design of the front sort of goes back to 2017 or something like that but for a rugged phone like this I'm sure it's not going to be a problem but taking a look at it like so. We've got our earpiece at the top, our sensors, and our 8 megapixel front camera, but we've got this massive chin here because this contains the 2 watt speaker that's built into this. But the screen is just a standard 720p display with no notch or anything like that. We've just got these big bezels on the top and the bottom there. It sort of reminds me of an LG G5 looking at it like this. Now if you haven't watched the video I've done on the AGM M7, feel free to click up here. There should be a little card that'll pop up. Feel free to watch that video. Now I tried to destroy that device as best as possible. I submerged it in water, I threw it against the ground, and it was fine. So I'm hoping that this one keeps up with AGM standards and survives the durability test. Out of the box there is a pre-applied plastic screen protector on the phone already, which is good. The build quality reminds me of the Doogee S86. It's very solid. It's got all these textured areas to help you grip the phone better. And the screen is ever so slightly recessed inside of the frame. So hopefully when we do the drop test, this doesn't shatter. I hope it doesn't anyways. Now the advertising did mention about the camera lens being sapphire. Unfortunately, I don't own the Mo scale of hardness picks, but I've got a razor blade and we'll just scratch. It's plastic. So maybe underneath this, the actual camera itself has a bit of sapphire layering, but I'm not too sure. When we tear it down, we'll have a better look at the cameras. The back is plastic, the buttons are plastic, and the frame is rubber. But let's take it the SIM card tray and have a look at the configuration. Since this phone is IP68 certified, it does have a rubber ring around the SIM card tray to help prevent water from getting in the phone. But we have support for a micro SD card and one nano SIM or dual nano SIMs working both at 4G. So I've got a Telstra SIM as well as my 16 gig micro SD card that's going in there. Let's go ahead and power up the AGM H3 and see how well this phone performs. That's just an LCD on here, it's not an AMOLED panel, it is just an IPS LCD, but it looks pretty good so far. We'll take a better look when it boots up. Oh, so we don't have setup? Okay, it's a bit unusual. So this is what I mean by it's got a pretty old design to it, but for a rugged smartphone like this, it doesn't need a notch or a teardrop notch or anything like that. I honestly would prefer the inclusion of a bigger speaker because that's also a front facing speaker that helps out a lot. But look, the display, it's a 720p one. It's not the sharpest one on the block, but it's more than enough for this device. We also have VOLTE and 4G at pretty much full strength. There is a little cross on the signal area. This is because I do not have any credit on this SIM card, so I can't use any data or anything like that. That's okay, we can test it as it is. Now, as I've mentioned, this is meant to be pretty much stock Android 11. So we'll take a look and swipe down. We have Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, do not disturb. We've got the torch there, which we'll test as always. That's fairly bright, actually. That's really good. Auto rotate, I'll put on. Battery saver, I'll leave off. Mobile data, 4G, airplane mode, screencast, screen record start, so you can record the screen while you go ahead and do what you need to do. We've got Super Shot, which is obviously a screen capture. Location, hotspot, data saver, and nearby share, and that's pretty much it for there. 
Swapping up for the applications, we've got Assistant, Calendar, Camera, Chrome, Clock, Compass, Contacts, Drive, Duo, Files, FM Radio, Gmail, Google, Google Play, Movies, I think, Maps, Messages, Phone, Photos, Play Store, Settings, Sim Toolkit, User Defined something, I'm not too sure what that is, YouTube, YouTube Music, and Zello. So it is all looking fairly stock at this point in time, which is good. Touching and holding the main screen, we can see the wallpapers. We'll take a look at these, and we have only one. That's it. If we hold down again and go to home settings, we've got some various settings for the home screen, but we'll leave all these for now. And in widgets, we've just got the usual stuff here. Nothing really exciting, I don't think. Zello is here. If you're going to use that, you can put a widget on the main screen. But I think pushing this key is where I'm going to need Zello. No, it opened the camera. When we get to settings, we will have a look at the functions of this key. But since we're in camera, I just want to have a look at the night mode. So it's a matter of micro lens mode. Okay, that's not the one. Oh, okay. It clicked. When you turn the night vision mode on, these two little red dots appear, because these are the two little infrared areas. Let's start having a look at this phone by going into settings and taking a look through here. Now, there was a bit of a jump there, because I have had time to do the battery test on this, which we'll talk about soon. I've also connected this up to Wi-Fi and tried to check for an update and nothing came through yet. But going through network and internet, we have Wi-Fi, which is already connected. We've got Telstra for our mobile network, Airplay mode, hotspot and tethering, data saver, and advanced. With their mobile settings, it does show 4G calling, so when I call this, it should stay on 4G. So I will give this a call and see how it sounds. The default ringtone is gonna be fairly loud. Oh, okay. Testing the earpiece quality of the AGM H3, it sounds a little something like this, and this is on Telstra Mobile. And the microphone of the AGM H3 sounds a little something like this as well. It should sound pretty clear from my testing, so hope it sounds good. And I can confirm that 4G does stay on when you call this. The call quality on this is pretty good. The earpiece is nice and clear, and the microphone is also nice and clear. With it staying on 4G when giving it a call, it ensures everything stays crystal clear. Connected devices, we have Bluetooth, and then in connection preferences, we've got NFC. So I'll go ahead and try this out. Now, I'm not too sure where NFC is located on this, but I'll give it a go. So it appears to be located right about here. We also have cast, printing, files received via Bluetooth, a Chromebook, you can link it to a Chromebook if you want to, nearby share, and Android Auto. Within apps and notifications, we can check to see how stock this actually is. So I'll show all the applications, show system, and we'll just quickly scroll through here. Feel free to pause the video if you need to. Oh, there's actually quite a lot listed in here, which I think it's still fairly stock. I'm pretty sure this is basically stock Android 11. There might be a couple of things that they've added on top to make it their own. It pretty much looks like stock Android 11. Uh, we've got some media tech stuff, compass, config updater. I wonder if there's a toolbox in here somewhere. Since this is a rugged device, they usually have that toolbox menu with a couple of things included in it, but we'll see. I don't think there was anything, but I'll just keep going. Just sort of trying to see if I see anything. I don't think there's going to be anything dodgy on this. I'm pretty sure it's all good. But as I said, if someone wants to pause through this and have a look at all of these, feel free to have a look. Punch hole cutout. It doesn't have a uh, hole punch camera, but that's okay. But if someone wants to go frame by frame and tell me if there's anything in here, feel free to let me know. And system UI. Yep, Android 11. Teardrop also. It's not a teardrop either. That's okay. That's all right. Uh, that is pretty much it. We've got a notifications menu, and we'll just scroll down to see if there's anything in here. Uh, blink light. Does this mean it's got an LED notification, or will the torch just light up if you get a notification? Just double checking, there's no notification LED on this. Now regarding the battery life of this phone, I managed to get almost 200 hours of standby time with Wi-Fi and my SIM at 4G, which is very, very good. Basically when it arrived and I did the initial filming, it was at about 95% or so, and I never charged it back up. And from using the device for a few days with pretty normal usage, it's perfectly fine considering it's fairly low specs that it has. The battery in this will be more than enough to be good for two days of pretty fair usage and still have more battery life to go. Sad that this doesn't have wireless charging, so you could just charge it by throwing it down and then coming back to it. Instead, you have to open the little door to the USB Type-C port. It kind of reminds me of the days of owning a Samsung S5, but that's all good. Charging this back up did take a while since it only supports 10 watt fast charging. I left it for about an hour and it was about 15% more before charging. So it's safe to say the charging isn't the fastest you'll see, but on a budget phone like this, it'll be more than enough. In display, we just have the brightness level, dark theme, which we can switch that to on, but I'll change it back to light. We have night light, which we can turn on now. Oh, there you go, yep. 
makes the screen all warm. That's all good. Adaptive brightness, wallpaper, which we've already sort of been through. There's only just the one. Sad. In advance, just a couple of other features. We can lift to wake, which I guess we'll just put on for now. In sounds, all of the volume sliders, vibrate for calls. I'm going to switch that on. We've got the phone ringtone, AGM Glory. It is a loudspeaker, but it's got a little bit of tinniness to it. I'll come back to that. Other sounds and vibrations are just listed, and in sound enhancement, best loudness is there. Someone told me to actually switch this off to see if we get better sound quality from the speakers, so I'll actually switch that off. And once we get to the speaker test, I'll try it both on and off. Storage, we've got 64 gigabytes of storage with my 16 gigabyte micro SD card loaded in this. Privacy, just has permission manager, show passwords, notifications on lock screen, autofill service from Google, and advanced, uh, anything in here? No, that's all good. Location is all good. In security, we've got fingerprint management as well as face unlock. So let's start with the fingerprint. So just enrolling my fingerprint like so. Seems to be detecting it. You've got to apply a bit of pressure to the fingerprint sensor for it to actually recognize it. So let's just try it. Oh no, it's okay now. You just put your finger on there. Nice. Face unlock looks like the standard Android 11 face unlock. So I'll go ahead and enroll my face, which it says to put my face in the circle. All right, we'll give that a go. Yep. Not the fastest, but it does work. In accounts, nothing added as of yet, but I will add a Gmail into this later on. Accessibility has everything you need in here if you need to use any of these options, but I'll leave that all as is for now. Digital wellbeing and parental controls. You can set your digital wellbeing tools and parental controls if you need to. Google services and preferences are all the usual. Duraspeed, which is just basically a RAM management tool, is on by default, so I'll just leave that. System, we have language as an input, with the keyboard being the standard Gboard. Gestures, we can change this to the navigation bar, which honestly, because it's not a full screen that's on this device, I'm not too sure on how practical the gestures would be, but you can use them if need be, or just the three button navigation, which I'm used to. Otherwise in gestures, nothing about the customizable key as of yet. If we go to advanced, I'll do the system update once again, just to check and nothing. So no customizable key settings within here. So I'm actually not sure where that's located. And finally in about phone, it just shows the model number as well as it being Android 11. The security patch level is July 5th, 2021, which is pretty good. And we've got the baseband version, kernel version and build number listed. So this is my fault here. I thought this was user defined profiles, but this is actually the application for the customizable key you can do push to talk, audio play, camera, LED torch, or nothing. When I was reading the application list, I didn't think that would be the user defined key, so that's my fault there. But otherwise, at this point in time, everything's looking fairly basic for a phone running Android 11. But I think the main thing about this phone that we want to try is the camera. So opening camera up, there it all is there. So the camera application does have HDR. We also do have the options to change it to night vision mode, which I did show before, but that's all pretty cool. There is no autofocus within the night vision mode though, so you are stuck with a fixed focus. You can zoom in though. We do have the macro lens, which I will test this out in better lighting. The zoom is just a two times digital zoom. We've got a beauty mode on the back camera, and we've got portrait mode, video, and short video. But going into settings, we've got the video quality being only 1080p is the maximum. So no 4K here, nothing special, just 1080p. And I don't think we can even do 60 FPS. I think we're just limited to 30 FPS. And that seems to be about correct. We do have beauty mode on the front camera. Uh, do we have portrait on the front camera? Yes, we do. Video and short video as well. And what's the video on the front camera? It is also 1080p. So yeah, it is a fairly basic camera application, but what we really want to see is how good the night vision works. So let me go ahead and take some test videos and photos. And we'll come back and see how good they really are.
testing the AGM H3. This is the main camera. So we'll just go in for a bit of a close up with the froggos. Autofocus does work, so that is all good. Bit of definition there, not too bad. Then we can toggle this two times, which looks a little something like that. And if we go super close up, it appears that the macro lens kicks in, I think. Or is it just the main sensor doing its thing? I'm not too sure. Flowers, all there. Bit of distortion going on. It doesn't appear to have EIS or anything like that. It's fairly basic, but there you go. And then we have the three Muppets here as usual. Nothing really to note here, all looks the same. Brick wall pan, like so, down to these random bolts. Still have no idea what they're for, but they're there. And Stuart looks a little something like that. Two times, there you go. Lemon tree looks a little something like that. And then to the far away icon, so we can do two times zoom, and then do the four times zoom, like so. There we go. How's your empathy? What are you doing? The blind's down, so like you can't really fit. Silly. What are you staring at? Boo. So I'm outside at 11 p.m. And that's what the night sky looks like. You can see the moon just there. Well, sort of. Okay, so we get a good idea that this is what it looks like, and then going down, you can't see a thing. But if we swap to night vision, this is what it looks like. So we'll go down to the frogs there, like so. And you have to get up really, really close to actually get the detail of them for the night vision mode to work. It's not as bright as the advertising actually says. It's kind of a bit dull, because if I point it like so, the tree, and then going up towards sort of the flowers, yeah, you can see, you know, there's some detail going on. There's no autofocus either. It is just completely fixed. But yeah, going up really close, obviously, yeah, you can start to see everything. You can do a two times zoom. Oh God, okay, let's not do the zoom. Uh, the moon has decided to disappear, but holding it up to the sky, it's all dark. So you got to come back down for it to sort of work. You get the idea of what's going on, I think. And the three Muppets, as per usual, Nothing's changed here, except they're in complete darkness, and you can see them. So, like, that's me pointing at the lemon tree. I'm about five meters away from the lemon tree at the moment, and you can't even see it in night vision mode. I'm now about a meter away from the lemon tree, and now you can see what's going on. So, it's definitely a bit of a letdown with the night vision camera, that's for sure. Brick wall pan, like so. Nothing special here. The bolts are... Uh, somewhere. There, there. There you go. Stuart looks a little something like that. He looks pretty happy in the darkness. Yeah, it's good. No point doing the far away air con because, well, you can't see. You can just see the fence and that's completely it. You'd actually find it more easy to record with the flash on because at least you can autofocus and get a lot of crispy clear definition. But when you switch to night vision mode though, it looks a little something like this. So I don't I don't really see the point of it. You could just use the LED that's built into it and it's no problems at all. And this doesn't have autofocus or anything. You can pull off better shots with just the LED flash. I mean, I guess if you wanted to do a found footage film inside of your own home with this camera, you can, because uh, this is in complete darkness. Ripley's somewhere. Oh, there. I need to do the dishes, but you know what? That's fine. I'll do it another day. She also likes the sink. For some reason, she sits in the sink. She plays with the water and... I don't know. I really don't know. Yeah, see? If I fits, I sits. So she'll just sit there now and continue to watch the water dripping out of the tap. And uh, that's Ripley being a... Uh, yes, I'm recording you in night vision mode, yes. I've only got 15 seconds to explain this, but the front camera actually can't save videos. You can only save it in the shorts, which is the 15 seconds of video. Otherwise, in the normal video mode, you can't save video. It just goes saving and saving. It doesn't do anything. But anyways, that's the front camera. It looks... Uh,
nope, no matter what I do with the whole normal video mode, it just won't save. It just goes around and around. So you can record 15 seconds for the front video and then you've got to stop and then do it again. So that's not really helpful. I've contacted AGM and they're fixing it, trying to. I will talk about this after the camera test. I think that's it. All right, you just seen all the photos and videos with this. And unfortunately, here is where we run into many problems. I know I should probably save all this for the conclusion, but I want to talk about the camera quality here and go through it all. So the main 12 megapixel camera, it's fine. It will do the job. It has autofocus, records in 1080p 30fps at a reasonable quality. And if you want to take a few shots here and there, there will be no problems. It did say in the advertisements that 12 megapixels better than 48 megapixels, but it takes 12 megapixel shots anyways, and it looks fairly average for 12 megapixel shots anyways. But the main sensor, it's not too bad, it will do. The two megapixel macro camera, as I've said in other reviews before, the main sensor up close to an object will do the exact same thing as the macro camera. So for example, here is a macro photo of the flowers outside. That's the macro shot. There's a couple of them that I actually did take, another one just there like so. But then if we jump to the main sensor, number one, it's high resolution and it looks a lot more clearer and you can go right in and see a lot of the details with the main sensor. So the macro camera is basically useless. Pretty much when a manufacturer throws in a macro camera on a phone, it's just for the whole sake of it and not really practical. When I first had my hands on phones that included these extra two megapixel cameras, I thought they were quite nifty. As you can see, the main sensor just has much more detail. I mean, just look. Macro flower at 1600 by 1200, flower with the main sensor at 12 megapixel resolution. Now you also may be questioning about the depth effects. Since there's no dedicated depth sensor in this, we instead have the circle blur, which you have seen on welcome devices. This essentially takes a donut photo. The outer ring is blurry and the inner portion is clear. As you can see with the flowers, it's all blurry around here, but then in the center is just all clear. And then I'm gonna show you a picture with the main sensor, which doesn't have any depth effects applied to it. And you can see that it's actually blurring the background quite naturally. And it looks way better than this fake software blur effect. And you can change the blur amount all the way up to maximum, which pretty much intensifies the donut. So portrait mode for the rear cameras is pretty much unusable. I honestly would rather the two megapixel depth sensor instead of the macro one to at least get to mess about with some portrait photos. But even so, as I said before, I got some pretty reasonable shots with some blur going on with the main sensor. So that's that. And now the 13 megapixel night vision mode. Let's talk about this. One of the main selling points of this phone is just unfortunately disappointing. The advertising made it look so much brighter and crisp, but in reality, since there's no autofocus and it's just fixed depending on where you're standing, it will either be blurry or fine. For example, the lemon tree. What you're looking at right now, I took this photo with the LED flash on. This is what it looks like with night vision mode on, which you've already seen the photos anyways. I was standing 2.5 meters away. So the first shot here is with nothing on, just the standard camera. So take that all in. Now the next one is the night vision mode at the exact same spot. While you can see the lemon tree, the details just aren't really there and spots of blurriness are kind of spread about. Also two times zoom with it looks exactly the same, but I just thought I'd show it. And then finally, with the LED flash on, that's more practical than the night vision mode as you get, well, color and that ability to actually autofocus, which yeah, it's still a little bit blurry, but it's a lot more practical than just the night vision mode by itself. I really don't understand why you'd want to use the night vision mode when the main sensor plus the LED flash will do a much better job. This is also the same in video. You get color and autofocus with the LED flash on, but night vision is just fixed. And if the night sky is a little bit bright, it won't agree with it and just not pick it up because of being night vision. The only good thing you can use night vision for is holding the phone without even taking photos or videos and just using it to navigate a dark environment. That's basically the most practical use that I could think for it. Which if you want to buy a phone for that night vision mode, the LED flash that's built into this phone will perform much better. Unless you're going to check on a sleeping child, then yeah, okay, the night vision mode is kind of stealthy, which also brings into the question that night vision mode in the wrong hands could be a bit scary. An intruder with this could do everything they need to do using night vision. And yeah, oh, look, I won't get into that. From my test, this is what I've concluded. Using the main sensor and LED for night shots, 
I'd much prefer that. I get the whole gimmick with night vision and everything like that, and while it does work for some parts, it's just not as exciting as I would have hoped for. Also, I had issues saving night vision shots the first time around, which I'll also talk about more soon. And I want to clarify this. I'm giving my honest opinions here. These are my thoughts on this, and I hope AGM can maybe tweak the software to improve on the above criticisms. Also, the watermark just down here, it can actually be switched off in settings, but it's called water capture, which I thought may have been an underwater camera mode similar to the Doogee S86 phone that I reviewed, but no, this is just to put the watermark off. But anyways, that's out of the way, let's talk about the front camera. The front camera is also a bit of a letdown. Granted, this phone is not meant for high resolution selfies, that's understandable, but just for standard photos like this, they're okay, they'll do. But Portrait mode is virtual once again, which produces the same donut effect, which you can't really see in this photo, but if you go back to the camera test and look at the ones where I demonstrated the portrait mode, you'll see it. So it would have been easier to just not have this mode on the front camera, as it just doesn't provide an actual portrait effect. It just, as I said, does the whole donut thing. The inner part is clear, and the outside is just all blurry. Now for video on the front camera, you probably noticed some weird stuff going on in the video test. And I'm going to show you all what happens. You record with the front camera for a bit, so you go ahead, press record on the front camera, it's recording, take a video, it's all good, right? So let's just say you're having a video, you're showing it, yep, okay, all done, you're ready to save it, you press stop, and it just does this, it will just stay on saving forever. It doesn't save the video, you exit the app and the video is just not saved, it's gone. I did contact AGM about this issue because I see this as a major oversight and they've yet to find a solution to this problem as of recording this portion of the video. The only way to take videos is to go into the short video mode and take 15 seconds of video, let it stop and save and then record again. That's the only way that I found it to work. And as you can see, it's just gonna go saving and saving and saving. So you've gotta close it, open the camera back up, go back to the front camera, and then go to short video, where you can then take a normal video. So you've only got 15 seconds. So that's it. And then it saves, no problems. So that's the only way you can take videos with the front camera. And I tried switching off functions and clearing the camera storage and all that to fix it and nothing would work, same issue. Granted, the video mode on the front is average and once again it will do the job but for a phone to basically break when you take a video is a major oversight it may i'm gonna say this it may just be my unit but once i hear back from agm i'm just not entirely sure at this point in time now with that whole issue of not saving video i had issues on the first shots i did at night time the pictures would be captured and it shows the little preview down here in the corner but you go to it and it's just not there i tried several times and eventually got it to start capturing night vision shots but Something is either up with the phone or the camera software for this to be happening. And even if it is fixed with a software update, you'll still have a pretty low end setup of cameras on this. Once again, the main sensor is the best out of all of this, but maybe the night vision can be tweaked, but we'll just have to see if AGM does end up fixing any of these problems. And once again, I just wanna say, this is just all of my thoughts as a reviewer and a consumer. It's just all not up to scratch with this phone, unfortunately. Anyways. With that all out of the way, I'll just sort of minimize that whole talk at the conclusion, but at this point in time, I have installed some applications and games on this phone to prepare for testing. And since we don't have the highest specs in this, I can start to kind of feel this becoming pretty laggy while just using, for example, the browser. It just really isn't the fastest thing on the planet. This phone's not intended to be a performance phone. With a few apps installed, you can sort of start to tell the difference, well, I can anyways, from factory when I first opened it up and had to play around with it, to now that I've got a few things installed on here, it just, you can really feel the performance of that Helio P22. It's just not that good. For most people, just using Chrome to browse the web will be more than enough. Now, as for the applications installed, I've put Arc Survival Evolved, Genshin Impact, Device Info Hardware, and Geekbench 5 on here, but the rest of the applications are basically stock Android ones, so there's not much I need to test here. I will open the FM radio up, because you do need to connect earphones. I do have these Type-C ones that I have from the Oh, what welcome device was it? The Yumi Phone N1, that's the one. So what is playing on Australian radio at 12.02 a.m. on a ooh, Wednesday morning? These aren't probably a good antenna, but FM radio does work, so that's all good. I did play around with the GPS on here and had no problems with it as well. 
picked up my location straight away. So with the big battery life in this and the pretty low performance, you could just use this as a GPS in your car or something like that. I don't think there'll be any problems with that. And the screen's big enough to be able to see where you're going and everything, so that's all good. So the last applications are the user-defined key, YouTube, YouTube Music, and Zello. So the user-defined key, as I showed earlier, so we can do push to talk. So now if we push that key, it's not going to do anything because Zello needs to be activated in order for push to talk to work, if I understand that correctly. Audio play opens up YouTube music, camera, opens up camera, LED torch, maybe you got to hold it, there you go, and obviously nothing will open up nothing, but if we do push to talk and I go to Zello, I think I have to sign in though, so if you do have Zello all set up and then go to the user defined key, then you can use the push to talk function and that will all work. As you can see, I just pushed it and Zello opens. Now, as I said in the AGM M7 video, I'm not too familiar with Zello. I don't know how it works or anything, but you can assign that key to open up Zello and use push to talk. I do like physical hardware keys for shortcuts and this one works perfectly fine, but the only problem is you can't actually add any more applications to it. So let's just say you wanted to use that customizable key to open up another application. You can't set it. You're only just limited to these ones and that's it. Well, at this point in time, let's go ahead and open up YouTube and load up the Costa Rica video. The default quality is 360p. We can play it in 1080p 60fps, but since the native resolution of this screen is only 720p, I'm going to choose 720p 60fps and we'll go ahead and play the video. We can also test out the speaker as well to see, you know, get a rough idea of how loud it's going to be, which this is up full ball. Well, works no problems. Once again with the display, it does look reasonable. It will do. It's not the sharpest and most clearest thing ever. It's only 720p, but you know, it looks, it looks reasonable. Let's try 1080p 60fps, just to see what happens. So that should be 1080p 60fps. Looks the same as 720p, honestly. But yeah, yep, that's all good. So you'll be able to watch YouTube videos in 1080p 60fps and 720p 60fps, no problems. But so far, just for that little test, the speaker's not too bad. But we've really got to try BFG Division, don't we? We've got to see how loud this thing is. So opening up YouTube Music, we'll go and find BFG Division. Now I'm going to try this with the sound enhancements on and off. So this is with best loudness off. One hundred one point seven, we got to the speaker. Honestly, there is a bit of distortion going on with it. The AGM M seven speaker was definitely a lot better than this. But considering this is a small speaker that's in this unit instead of the massive one on the AGM M seven, I can understand there might be a little bit less quality. But I'll now put best loudness on, and we'll see if that improves anything. I'm trying to find out where the speaker's located out there. So we got to 102 even on that test. So best loudness does work, kind of. Look, if you don't have music cranked up to 100, it will be more than enough because it's a pretty loud speaker. But if you have it up to 100%, you're probably going to hear a little bit of distortion going on. But if you do want a device just to play music on the phone itself, no earphones or anything like that, the AGM M7 has a bigger speaker. It's decently priced. And honestly, that wasn't a bad phone. And as I said, that speaker in that is beefy. You could go for that if you wanted to. But the speaker in this, it will do the job. It's more than enough. When we tear this down, we'll see how big it actually is. So pretty much now that all major features are tested with this device, I want to open up the specifications first before the gaming tests, because I just want to see the numbers first before we actually get into games. And also because I actually need to play Genshin Impact for a little bit longer to actually get to a point where I can change the settings to put it all up to maximum and see how it runs. So I'll open up Geekbench first, which says it's the Droid AGM H3 running Android 11 with the Helio P22 in it. So we're going to run the CPU benchmark, leave this, we'll be back in a moment. Okay. 
And the scores are in. 151 for our single core and 881 for our multi-core score. I'll display some other scores from different phones on screen for you all. Would this currently be the lowest I have seen in Geekbench for an actual mainstream phone review? I'm pretty sure it is because the Doogee S86 got 296 and 1355. Poco X3 beats it, the Redmi Note 8 also beats it as well. It's kind of no surprise that the numbers are fairly low considering what processor is in this, as that is pretty much the lowest branded MediaTek processor being the Helio P22. It just, yeah, didn't really go that well. But as I mentioned earlier in the video, the intended audience for this phone isn't really going to be much about performance per se, but a better processor thrown into this will make the Android 11 experience a lot more smoother. But also if you did want to do more intensive stuff though. But even though these are just numbers, this phone is starting to feel more and more like a phone from 2017, 2018 sort of thing with the specifications, the look of it as well. Why have the buttons started to just stay? like that okay it's all just feeling quite average at the moment but i will open device info hardware and just check over the specifications so it's a droid agm h3 720p display helio p22 everything that we all sort of know nfc audio other unknown as well the flash being a samsung module ram is four gigabytes Helio P22 is listed, all is good here, and I don't think they're going to be lying about any specifications or anything like that, I think everything is all good within here. 1440 by 720 display, 4 gig RAM, 64 gig storage, the cameras, so we've got the 12 megapixel back, 8 megapixel front, 13 megapixel back, and 2 megapixel rear, so everything is all accounted for there. Battery, 5400 milliamp hours, sensors, we do have accelerometer, light, proximity sensor, and that word that I'm not going to pronounce because I butcher it every single time. And then that's pretty much it. Now there's no point of downloading any other applications to check the specifications of this phone because once we tear it down we'll get to see anyways. I think you get a good idea of what's going on here. So we'll go ahead and do the gaming test and see how it fares out. And I have a feeling it's not going to be good because it's not really intended for heavy gaming. But we'll give it a go with Ark Survival Evolved. The default quality is medium, but we'll change the settings to epic and the resolution bumped all the way up. So we'll go ahead and see what happens. I don't think this is going to be very fun. Oh boy. Oh boy. Yep. Well, I wasn't expecting much. Oh yeah, yeah yep, <laughs> got some graphical glitches sort of happening there, bit stuttery, uh, yeah, safe to say epic settings obviously was a stupid idea, so I'm going to bump it all down, okay, so all low settings and everything down to low, that's a lot better, there we go, but it definitely looks terrible now at this point in time, but yeah, you can game on this, if you just bump everything down to low. If you're expecting everything to run at 60 FPS on absolute maximum settings, then you're wrong. But this isn't a gaming phone, I need to clarify that. It's not a gaming phone, and I'm running out of breath there, that was kind of a bit annoying. This isn't a gaming phone, not meant for gaming, but I just want to play, you know, this and Genshin Impact, just to sort of get a rough idea of what we're looking at performance-wise of this device. But if you have this phone on a job site, you take a lunch break, you want to play a quick game of Call of Duty or something like that, bump everything down to low and you'll be fine. It's just not going to look as nice as you'd hope for. Anyways, that's Ark. So now it's time for Genshin Impact. This may break the phone. Possibly. This time around I'm actually going to create an account because if I go to play this on future devices, I want to actually be at the point where I can go straight to settings and change everything down. So I'll go ahead and do this download the 10 gigs or so. We'll see how Genshin Impact runs and then start to do the durability test and tear down for this device. So Genshin Impact runs a little something like this. Now I've got up to the point where I can actually change the settings and I've put everything down to absolute lower settings. So this is at <laughs> bare bones stock resolution. Everything is just down to complete low, uh, which it runs kind of. It's a bit laggy. The default settings for this were set to medium for the most part, and it was running at about maybe five frames a second, maybe, if that. Just for the whole sake of it, though, I mean, you get a whole idea of what's going on here. This is all at low. It looks a bit meh, 
you know, as to be expected. But what if I was... Oh, got to run away from here. What if I put everything up to absolute maximum? I'll let you see how it runs. <laughs> it's going to break the phone, I guarantee it. So it's all there. Everything's down to absolute lowest. But now I'm going to put it to highest, uh, which can lead to overheating and serious lagging. Well, that's kind of the whole point of it, I guess. Go on. Let's see how powerful the Helio P22 is. Uh, well, it looks nicer now. That's a positive. But unfortunately, it's running pretty bad. Uh, that's single digit sort of frames, I'd say. Yeah. Look, I think you get the whole idea that Genshin Impact is not really a game meant for this phone, nor is this phone meant for gaming. But you can play some games on here, providing you put the settings down to low. The f*** was that? Well, it's just friendly people attacking me. That's okay. If you want to play a quick game of something, no worries. You can do that. Just put everything down to low. You'll have no problems whatsoever. You get what this phone can do. And I think at this point in time, I've pretty much went through everything. I've tested the camera and rambled on about the camera for about 10 minutes. I've tested most of the major features on this phone. I think I've done everything. So I think we should jump into the durability test. And let's see if this thing can survive being submerged in water, most likely. Can it survive being dropped? Who knows? And if I have a lighter that does work, we'll maybe burn a little bit of it to just see what happens. It'll probably catch on fire. That's okay. Well, uh, let me go set up the sink. We'll see how this can go. And I'm going to also be playing BFG Division on the speaker. So when I dump it in water, we'll just see if the speaker starts as a sword or turns off or something like that. God, oh, that fingerprint's on the screen. Anyways, I'm going to factory reset this just to make sure. And we'll be back and see what happens in the durability test. So I factory reset the phone. I've put BFG Division back on here. When I reset the phone, setup actually came up on this phone. So that's a bit strange that it didn't come up when I first took the phone out of the box. And it also was in Russian which is a bit strange. But anyways, uh, without further ado, I've got the sink filled up with water. I'm gonna play BFG Division, put it in here, see what happens. Make sure the port is nice and tight, yep. I'll just sort of drop it in now. There we go. Just sort of give it a little bit of a Go for a swim, little buddy. Does the touchscreen work underwater? Probably not. No. The speaker's awfully quiet now. Alright, let's see how it's going. The speaker doesn't sound as loud now because there's all sort of water trapped in there. Uh, but look, I honestly didn't think anything would happen. But just dumping it in water, of course it's going to survive, it's supposed to be half A68 and 69K certified, so I think what you really want to see is the drop test of this. So I'll just kind of shake the water out of it. There we go. We'll just go for another round, why not? Just sort of, maybe. So I think at this point in time, being submerged in water, there's no problems with this. Let's move on to the actual durability test where we're going to drop this and see if it's shockproof, dropproof, and all the other stuff that it claimed. So we're outside now. Here's the AGM H3 all working beautifully. No problems at all. So we're going to be just dropping it from a couple of heights. I'm going to start from probably about waist height straight down. We'll see how it goes. So straight down. In three, two, one. First test, okay. Face down from about waist high. All still good. Okay, so I'm gonna do probably about six feet high, straight down. Bounce around like a pinball. Okay, six feet high, straight down.
this is good so far. Okay, uh, we need to be a little bit more violent with this because, like, there's just some scuff marks going around it from obviously hitting the ground, but no cracks, no nothing. So I'll just um, kind of do it again. Maybe I'll just hold it about eight feet in the air. So I've got my arm just sort of outstretched, and I'll just let it just fall. Just let gravity do its thing. Oh shit. Nope. Still all fine. Okay, uh, I'll do that again. <laughs> How many drops do I need to do? Nope. This is quite good. Okay, the body's taking the damage. It's just basically a pinball. You drop it against the ground, it just bounces around. So, uh, let's do let's do a bit of this. Nope. 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 Oh, there we go. <laughs> ah, dang. There you go. Took a little while, but I dropped it probably from about just under about waist height and just pretty much dropped it straight down and it landed straight on the screen but basically in most scenarios if you're going to be using this phone it's going to be pretty much taking the side impacts it's bouncing around like a pinball as I've said several times but if you drop it straight down that's what's going to happen it's going to look a little something like that so look durability wise though it actually held up quite well unlike the Doogee S86 it was the second drop I think and just crack the screen, that's it. So this one did put up a fight, even though the glass is actually inside of the body and it's ever so slightly raised around here. It did crack, but it put up one hell of a fight, so I've got to give credit to this phone for doing that. So now I think it's best that we take this apart and have a look at the insides of this and uh, see what we think of the AGM H3. Here we are back inside. It's much better now, you can't hear the wind. Yeah, it's unfortunate to see that it did crack. It was just strange that waist high, straight down, did that, but it survived being dropped from about eight feet high, straight down, and it just bounced around. Pretty much the body took all the damage, and then finally, that's what happened. But as I said, I've got to give credit to AGM for making this device hold up for as long as it did. I want to tear it down and have a look at the guts of this thing. See how much water's still inside of here. Hopefully it's all cleared out by now. And I don't know if I mentioned it before, but I took the screen protector off before I did the drop test because, well, it's a screen protector. Having that on there is kind of not fair, so I took it off. Anyways, I'm gonna need a heat gun because that's the only way we're gonna get into this. Actually, I forgot to set it on fire. There we go. Burning the plastic back just resulted in that. Got a couple of little dings in there from the flames, but it's all still okay. Our patient is actually still alive at this time, and I want to keep it alive. So here we go. I'll also apply a little bit too much heat to show the actual IPS LCD with the burn marks in it. So here we go. You use a heat gun as a... Uh a stylus. That's nice. There you go. So it gets too hot, and that's what happens. You've seen this on Jerry Rig Everything's videos where he puts the light on the screen, and that's what happens. It will slowly recover like it has. Beautiful. So now we just need to find a point of getting into this device, which I think it's probably best to start at maybe the top. I might lock it, just so then it doesn't call emergency services or something. No. No. I cracked it. <sighs> the screen is that tight within this phone, it's just almost impossible to actually get in it. And even just prying ever so slightly at the screen, it's dead. So unfortunately, it's not going to survive the teardown. As with most rugged devices anyways, pretty much the screen's cracked. That's it. Uh, it all still does work though, but I think we just pull the screen off and have a look at the insides of this. Okay, so that's pretty much the display in pieces there. I did sort of sever the flex ribbon because it was kind of a bit impossible to see where it was. And at the moment, it's kind of all still <laughs> stuck in there like so, but... 
there you go. That's it there. But the glass on the front of the phone is pretty average. It's fairly thin. Uh, not as thick as what was on the Doji, but then again, the Doji didn't really last that long anyways. Uh, but yeah, that's pretty much the display there. I may have accidentally tore this down the wrong way. I have a feeling I might have, because there's no screws, well, that I can see anyways, for this to actually come apart. So how does one actually get into this then? I just usually think that it's the screen that comes off first, but nope. It's the back panel. So I could have kept this going. Since there wasn't any guides online to actually disassemble this, I kind of just took a gamble with, you know, doing what I did. So at least we all know now that in order to get into the phone, you don't pull the screen off. You can just take the back cover off and we're in. And the phone's just vibrating. And I just broke the uh, fingerprint sensor as well. Look, everything's going completely to plan. <laughs> Everything's uh, everything's going good. It was bound to happen, okay? This is all in the name of science, all right? I mean, they have put this sort of rubber gasket going around the entire back of the phone. They've also put sort of this stuff here near the NFC and all that to protect it. Like, just sort of blobs of glue that they've put in there to protect this from water. But so far, it looks like it's, it's worked. I'll start with the bottom PCB. The thing is, I've got to review another rugged phone very soon. Kind of destroying these devices is inevitable with rugged devices because if the screen cracks, well then you may as well just pull it apart anyways, but anywho, what can we do? Well there we go! There's the speaker in that thing, so that's just the plastics and there is a waterproof gasket that does go around it, but that's the speaker there! That's a beefy one, let's pull it out. It appears to be completely stuck into the frame, so we may have to take the top plastics off so I can disconnect the battery because it's just vibrating every five seconds. And now I can't show the infrared LEDs on the back as well. I did want to see inside of the camera lens about the whole sapphire thing, so I think we're gonna just sacri we're gonna sacrifice this. Why not? And the NFC pad was located in the spot that I said, just right smack bang in the center. So now I should be able to just pull this up, like so. I just ripped the NFC <laughs> flex ribbon as well. Uh, okay, that's it's at this point in time, it, it doesn't matter at all. So I'll just pull that off. We'll just unplug the battery, screen connection, all that sort of stuff. I'm actually not sure how to pull the battery out because it's kind of just sort of stuck in there like so. Also, the infrared LEDs are just there. That's all they are. These two little tiny infrared LEDs. And they seem to be actually developed by AGM. So yeah, that's just them there. And they communicate with the motherboard like so. And yeah, that just sits on there. And there's, I don't know what all that may be. Maybe another microphone or something in there, possibly. Let's try and get the motherboard out first then. And we can see that there's actually some cooling that's gone into here. There's this sort of aluminium piece just stuck into the frame there. And there's a tiny, tiny bit of thermal paste just on top of the Helio P22. So they actually have considered some sort of cooling in this, which is kind of nice to see, but that's only just machined into the actual frame itself. So that's stuck in there. The bottom PCB though, we may have to use a bit of force. There we go. That's the speaker there. And you can see the waterproof seal that's gone all around there, just to the opening of the speaker grill just there to let the sound go through. So yeah, they've they've done a pretty good job here, but the speaker's smaller than the AGM M7, but still, it's a pretty beefy one. And it was fairly loud, but it just had a little bit of distortion to it when you got to maximum. And the bottom PCB just comes out like so with the speaker attached to it. USB Type-C port is on there, and the vibration motor is also soldered directly onto it, as well as the microphone. But yep, that's the complete assembly there. Before I actually try and take the battery out, let's have a look at the motherboard itself. So it's fairly basic, but we need to look at the cameras. And if we have a look, there's a little sticker just there, and I can see it says MT6762V, which is correct. But let's take a look at the cameras, because they're the sort of main focus, the main selling point of this device. We have the two megapixel macro sensor, like so, which is fairly useless. As I said in the 10 minute camera ramble, the front camera is just this little guy like so. The main 12 megapixel sensor does have a code in there, 
and does not have any optical image stabilization, but this was the best sensor of them all because this one here is the night vision one. There appears to be some, no, it's plastic. There's a plastic lens on there. Uh, I'm gonna open this up though, because this is the night vision camera. This is what they said had the sapphire lens or something like that in it, unless it's the main camera they're talking about. So lifting that off, we do see that it is a fairly big sensor that they have put into this. What they said was true about the whole sensor being a fairly big one. But then the rest of the camera has a reflective surface just on there, but I don't know if I can get any further or not. I do have a way to get into it, but it's kind of a little uh, violent. So pretty much from my understanding, there's a piece of glass that just went over that, which is just all falling out now. And that's pretty much it. There's just a little plastic piece on top of this little camera lens area. And that's pretty much it. So unless they're talking about this glass that I've just shattered being the sapphire lens, but I'm not really too sure about that one. And there is plastic on top of the main camera as well. It's safe to say that there probably isn't a sapphire lens in here per se. What they're probably talking about most likely is just the glass that was on top of that, which... Could have been sapphire, but it did crack and crumble, and I've got no way of testing it anyways. We've also got the tiny little earpiece at the top, as well as the little light sensor, just integrated into the frame. And now it's a matter of trying to pull the battery out. This will be fun. Oh, I actually did that too. Just ignore that. I have a feeling that there's screws under here. No, there's not. Well, this has been a fun teardown though, but no, no screws. Okay. How do you pull the battery out then? Okay, I may have got it. There we go. There was probably a right way of taking that out, but I used the brute force way, which I guess worked. But no, I think I killed the battery as well trying to pull that out. Oh, was there actually pull tabs in there or am I just seeing things? I think there, there may have been a way to get into this. I don't know. It looks like it was glued down. They've glued it down. They've glued this plate down to the actual frame itself. And that's how that's all stuck in there. But the battery itself is the AGMH3, 5400 milliamp hours, which is all correct. And this is now slightly uh, damaged. Yeah, I mean, I may have punctured through one layer, but I really wouldn't trust that from now on. I've pretty much destroyed this entire thing. I've got to say, this is actually fairly well built. They've put a bit of uh, engineering into this to make it, you know, well, waterproof, number one pretty much drop proof the frame is very very sturdy it's good to see cooling in here even though the performance isn't really the greatest but at least it does have some form of cooling in here i've pulled this thing to absolute bits there's nothing else that i could really do with this uh, the motherboard there's nothing else to really cover on that we've already sort of had a look at that how structurally sound is that pretty good with everything else on top of it. I think that'll be no problems whatsoever. Like the AGM M7, this phone did definitely put up a fight. And while the screen did crack, it still survived many drops. Tearing this down, I did learn that uh, if I ever get another H3, I've got to pull the back cover off first to sort of disassemble the entire thing. There's no going back, unfortunately, with this one. So what I'll do now is put these into probably the box it came in and we'll jump into the conclusion about the AGM H3, go over my thoughts about this device and if I recommend it or not, and we'll conclude this video. Here we are at the conclusion of the AGM H3, and I'll try to make this as short as possible since this video has already gone on way too long, but there was timestamps, so hopefully they've helped. The AGM H3 at its retail price just isn't worth it. I get the whole point of the night vision cameras being the main selling point as well as it being rugged, and while yes, it did put up a decent fight in the durability department, the camera hardware they advertise is just a bit misleading and not exactly as useful as it's hyped up to be, considering the LED flash and the main sensor combined make night shots look way better than what the night vision camera can actually pull off. The front camera having that saving issue and generally the camera app being pretty average at best is a bit of a concern, but if AGM can push an over-the-air update that might tweak the front camera and night vision camera settings, then it may be worth another look. But at this point in time, I can pretty much stop talking about the cameras since I went on for about 10 minutes about them already. The performance for this device is just really lagging behind with the pretty low-end Helio P22. Out of the box it was fine, but with some applications installed it starts to become slow in some areas. If you want a rugged phone to last with decent battery life and that's all you care about, 
then this will be no problems. But even so, you may start to see some performance dips with just normal usage. With stock Android 11 on this and not being held down with a heap of bloatware applications like some manufacturers load onto phones, that does help out with performance though. The battery is a strong point in this phone lasting 200 hours and could possibly go for even more while it doesn't have super fast charging or wireless charging for that matter. The battery life itself is part of a positive note for this. While the phone is looking like something from 2017, it is fairly well built and will survive in most environments and scenarios. The speaker also being fairly loud inside this phone, not as powerful as the M7, but still a decent one. All in all, if you are all for the gimmick of night vision, then take a look at this, but it's hard to recommend this at its 199 US dollar retail price when the Doogee S86, which I previously reviewed, is priced lower and has higher specifications. Granted, it didn't last as long in the durability test, but it was still a great phone. In the next few videos, I will be taking a look at the Blackview BL5000, which has 5G, a high-end MediaTek Dimensity, or Dimensity? I don't know. And it is a rugged gaming phone, and it's only 70 US dollars more than the AGM H3 at full price. So I would honestly say to shop around, unless you can get this phone really cheap, then it may be a good option. But there are other rugged phones out there that will outperform this and offer much more features and performance. I do hope AGM takes these opinions and criticisms on board and try to work out the issues with the phone as maybe adjusting the price to better fit within the market. There are other brands that offer rugged devices with better cameras and features for just a bit more. And the price of this phone is pretty much for it being rugged and having the night vision camera. That's basically it. But anyways, folks, that's it. That is the complete in-depth review of the AGM H3. If there is anything I missed, please let me know. But once again, a huge thank you to AGM for letting me review and test this phone out. I really do appreciate it as always. And if you are interested in taking a look at the phone, the official launch date is August 23rd. And like I said at the start of the video, it is priced fairly low for a limited amount of time. And the first 100 buyers will get those bonus JBL earphones. Also the 10% off coupon code, which is just my YouTube name, Smalls. Feel free to use that if you want to. All links are in the description below to check it all out. Once again, they're not affiliate links, so I'll not earn anything if you click them or anything like that, and I was not paid by AGM for this review. This review went way longer than anticipated, but we are finally at the end. If you made it through the whole video, then thank you so much for that. If you are in the premiere, feel free to let me know what you thought of this phone, and even after the premiere, let me know down in the comments what you thought of this phone overall. But anyways, everyone, I have two more serious phone reviews that need to be worked on, so give me a few weeks to get them done, and I'll hopefully hold a live stream soon for I hope or I wish, whichever one comes first. But thank you so much everyone for watching this video. I really do appreciate it and I hope you found this entertaining, educational or interesting. As long as you appreciate the work that goes into these videos, that's really all that matters. Thank you so much once again and as always everyone, please take care, stay safe, be good people and I'll see you all in the next video. And hopefully the phone won't end up in pieces. I'll, uh, I'll be more careful next time. Take care everyone and I'll see you next time. If you like this content, feel free to leave a like or a dislike if you didn't. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you all in the next video.